2001 Canadian Open Mathematics Challenge Part A. An operation symbol is defined as a symbol b is equal to a squared plus 3 exponent b. What is the value of 2 symbol 0, symbol 0, symbol 1? We will use this definition, of course, throughout the question. So this becomes... 2 to the power of 2 plus 3 to the power of 0. And then we have the symbol, and this guy becomes 0 to the power of 2 plus 3 to the power of 1. Right. Entirely based on that definition. So this is 4 plus 1 symbol, and this is just 3. So that's 5 symbol 3, and going back to that definition, we have 5 squared plus 3 to the power of 3, which is 25 plus 27, and that is 52. In the diagram, what is the value of x? Well, let's uh, first label a few things. This here, that angle, will be 180 minus 7x. Correct? Because the sum of the angles of any triangle add up to 180. So this plus this plus this have to equal 180. So therefore, that is 180 minus 7x. Very similarly, that angle in there will be 180 minus 8x for the same reason. And then notice that this angle is the same as that angle, right? There's that rule that if you have two lines then this angle will be the same as that angle. So therefore, this is also 180 minus 7x, and this is 180 minus 8x. 180 minus 8x. So then we take this triangle and add it all up. We have 180 minus 7x plus 180 minus 8x plus 5x, don't forget that 5x up here, that angle, and all of this adds up to 180. Doing this math, let's see here, 7 minus 15 plus 5 is minus 10, put it on the other side so we get 10x, and on this side I think we just have 180, and therefore x is equal to 18, and that's what they wanted. A regular hexagon is a six-sided figure which has all of its angles equal and all of its side lengths equal. If P and Q are points on a regular hexagon which has a side length of 1, what is the maximum possible length of the side line segment PQ? Let's draw a hexagon. It does not have to be a work of art, just as long as you understand that it's a six-sided shape where all sides are the same length. And they've told me that that is one. So I just put ones everywhere. And they're saying, what's the maximum possible length of the line segment PQ? Well, when you stare at this, if P is here and Q is here, then that line will be the, the longest line segment between any two points. Because if you put Q here, then obviously it would be shorter. So we have to figure out that distance, and that shouldn't be too hard. I think we just have to use a lot of 30, 60, 90 triangles here. So I'm going to draw two lines that are perpendicular, that one and that one. And immediately, this segment here we know is 1, because it's the same as that side. This is not perfectly drawn to scale, but you understand. It's the same as this side. There, there you go. So from here to here is 1. So now all I have to figure out is that distance and distance, this distance. And because of the symmetry of this diagram, both of those I will label as x. They're going to be equal. Okay, great. Now we have to do uh, a little bit of um, solving for the angles. So each of these angles are the same. It actually tells you that in the question. All of its interior angles are the same. So we have to figure out what is the length or what is the measure of those interior angles? Well, there are six of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
And a hexagon, even if you didn't know this, you can kind of just figure it out, that it's what? Four triangles, right? And each triangle has a sum of 180 with regard to its interior angles. So a hexagon would have 4 times 180 if you were talking about the sum of its interior angles. And how many angles are there? Well, there's six of them. Each of them, let's just call it theta. So that's how you figure out the measure of each interior angle. So this is 720 is 6 theta, and therefore theta is equal to 120. So that means each of these guys is 120 degrees. Now, this is 90, so that means this angle in here must be 30, and therefore that angle is 60. So we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So let me just draw it here. So this was 60, this is a right angle, and this is 30. This is x, and this hypotenuse is 1. I've just basically drawn that triangle over here. And for the thousandth time on a math contest, we have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and the ratio of the sides are 2, <laughs> 1, and root 3. Those are the ratio of the sides of a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So that means that x over 1 is the same as 1 over 2. That's the ratio. So that means x is a half. So, finally, the length PQ is x plus 1 plus x, so that'd be a half plus 1 plus a half, and that is equal to 2. And that is the answer. That's the maximum possible length of any line segment PQ. Solve for x, 2 times 2 to the power of 2x is equal to 4 to the power of x plus 64. Okay. Let's see, where can we go here? 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x. We can do that. And on this side, I'll just leave it like this for now. This now becomes 2 times 4 to the power of x. And this is 4 to the power of x. So we can bring this one over. So 2 minus 1, so it would be just one of these guys. Correct? And that's 64. Well, 64 is 4 to the power of 3, 4 to the power of x. And since the bases are the same, the exponents are the same, therefore x is equal to 3. And that's it. Triangle PQR is a right angle triangle at Q and has side lengths PQ is 14 and QR is 48. If M is the midpoint of PR, determine the cosine of angle MQP. Well, let's label this uh, PQ, they say is 14, and put that there, and QR is 48. So with Pythagoras, we can easily figure out PR. PR squared is 14 squared plus 48 squared, and that is 196 plus 2304, and that is 2500. So PR is 50. And they're saying that M is the midpoint, so that means P to M is 25, and M to R is 25. Okay. So at this point, uh, it's not really a trick, but it's, it's a little insightful. Not everybody will be able to get this, is you draw a circle around the vertices. So I'll attempt to draw a circle. Uh, there we go. Well, you guys get the point. It's basically a circle, and, well, it doesn't look like a circle, but you guys understand that I've drawn a circle so that it touches the vertices P, Q, and R. Now, there's a rule that if you have a diameter of a circle, and then you use that diameter to draw an interior triangle like this, that interior triangle, if the diameter is the hypotenuse, will have a right angle. Now that triangle already has a right angle, so that means that since, therefore, since PQR, that angle is 90 degrees, we can conclude that PR is the diameter of that circle. And that helps us 
a lot in this question. So if I draw a line, say, from M to Q, where M is the center, since M is the midpoint of P, R, that line represents the radius. And P to M also represents the radius, and that's 25. So therefore, R is 25 right there from Q to M. So as you can see, that, that really helps. And therefore, P, M, Q is an isosceles triangle. And that helps us also because that means that this angle and this angle are the same because in isosceles triangles, that's the property. Okay, great. So now we can proceed with the question. Angle MQP, they want you to find the cosine of angle MQP. Well, we have denoted MQP as theta, so cos of theta. Well, the cos of theta, if I use MQP here, is not obvious, but if I use this, it is obvious because it's just part of a right triangle. So I'll use that one. It's the same. So the cos of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 14 over 50. This is the adjacent side, which is 14. This is the hypotenuse, which is 50. And that's it. And you can lower this to lower terms, which is 7 over 25. So as you can see, that one step of putting that circle around the triangle really helps in this question. The sequence of numbers t1, t2, t3 is defined by tn plus 1 is tn minus 1 over tn plus 1 for every positive integer n. Determine the numerical value of t999. Okay, this question actually, uh, sorry, there's a typo. There's something missing right here. There should be a t1 is equal to 2. Otherwise, how could you possibly proceed with the question, right? Okay, so we have to use this recursive formula to keep going. And obviously, we're not going to do it all the way up to T999. That would take forever. So my assumption is that there's going to be some sort of a pattern, and then we can extrapolate that pattern. So here we go. 1n equals 1. We already know that T1 is 2. So if we use this, it would be T2 is equal to... Um, t1 minus 1, which is 2 minus 1. I'll just write it out. All over t1 plus 1, which is t1 plus 1. Okay. Uh, so that's 2 minus 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 1 third. Okay, so that is my value for t2. I'll just put t1 up here. It was, was 2. And then you just keep going. That's pretty much all it is. And you know what? I'll let you guys do it. I'll, I'll just do one more, and then I'll let you guys do the other ones because you don't want to hear me talk you through this. But the good news is I think the pattern will start occurring pretty quickly, and therefore you, you don't have to go through this uh, t for too long. T3 would be two, two, uh, T2 minus 1, so that's 1 third minus 1 over 1 third plus 1. So that is what? Negative 2 over 3 over 4 over 3. And that is equal to negative a half. So that's t3. When n equals 3, t4 now, again, always using that formula, is going to be t4. So negative a half minus 1 over negative a half plus 1. So that's going to be minus 3 over 2 over 1 half. And that is equal to minus 3. And that's T4. And then N equals 4, T5. Um, this is going to be uh, minus 3 minus 1 over minus 3 plus 1. And that's minus 4 over minus 2, which is 2. And that's T5. All right. So at this point, I think I will let you guys do the rest. But the good news is that you will quickly find that at this point, the pattern starts to occur. If you did the next one, T6, it would be one third. If you do the next one, T7, it would be a negative a half. And if you do the next one, T8, 
would be minus 3. So as you can see, this pattern of 2, 1 third, negative 1 half, minus 3 repeats itself. 2, 1 third, negative 1 half, minus 3. And then it just keeps on going like that over and over again. So we have to extrapolate, right? So what is it going to be when it's T999? Okay. Well, um, which one do you want to concentrate on? I'll just concentrate on the first one. It seems to me that T1 is 2, T5 is 2. So if you keep adding 4 to this number, it that term will be 2. So for example, T1 was 2, T5 was 2. But if I add another 4, T9, that's also going to be 2. You see what I mean? And then you just keep going, T13. And then instead of adding 4s, you can add multiples of 4, right? You can add 40, you can add 400, and that way you can quickly get up to 999. And if I do that by adding 400 and 40 and all that, I get up to T969 pretty quickly. That's going to be 2. And then you can just keep adding 4s, dot, dot, dot. And then eventually you get up to T997. And that's the closest that you get to T999. And then you just look at the formula, or the pattern, I should say. What's the next one? It will be, the next one will be one-third. And then what's the next one after that? T999 will be this guy, negative a half. And that is your answer. So as you can see, you're looking for a pattern, and then you just extrapolate that pattern all the way up to T999. If a can be any positive integer, and 2x plus a is y, a plus y is x, and x plus y is z, determine the maximum possible value for, for x plus y plus z. All right, a lot of ways to approach this question. Which way do you want to approach it? Um, I don't know. Let's, let's just isolate in, in terms of one variable, I guess. So from this, I'll just get y is equal to x minus a. And here, y is already in terms of x and a. And then I guess I have to do the same sort of thing here. Um, let's just substitute that back into here, this guy into here. So that would give me 2x plus a is equal to y, but y is x minus a. So that means, let's see, x is minus 2a. Okay. And then y is x minus a. So let's substitute that finding. y is equal to minus 2a minus a. So y is equal to minus 3a. All right, so we're getting everything in terms of a. And then I think I can do that with this guy. So x is minus 2a plus y, which is minus 3a. So z is minus 5a. OK. So now we have to figure out the maximum possible value of x plus y plus z. All right. I think that's definitely possible. x plus y plus z. So x plus y plus z is, what's x? Uh, minus 2a. y is minus 3a. And z is minus 5a. So this is minus 10a. So they want the maximum possible value of minus 10a, where a is a positive integer. Hmm. All right. Well, let's see. Let's try a equals 1. When a is 1, this would be minus 10 when a is 1. When a is 2, this would be minus 20. When a is 3, it obviously just keeps getting smaller, right? So that means that the largest possible value for x plus y plus z is minus 10, which occurs when a is equal to 1. Mm, I think that's it. The graph of the function y is equal to gx is shown. Determine the number of solutions of the equation g at x, absolute value minus 1, absolute value is a half. Okay, let's uh, simplify this guy before we proceed. This will lead to two possibilities. 
The first is if g at x, if you just drop the absolute value from the total expression, is a half. The next one is if g at x absolute value minus 1 is equal to negative a half, right? Those are the two possibilities. And from this guy, we can now proceed that g at x absolute value is equal to 3 over 2. This now proceeds into two, dir two directions, that g at x is either equal to 3 over 2, or g at x is equal to minus 3 over 2. Okay, same sort of story here. g at x, absolute value, add 1 to both sides, make that a half. That splits into two possibilities. Either g at x is equal to a half, or g at x is equal to negative a half. Okay, so now let's go to the graph and see. So this, of course, is your x-axis. This is y, which is equal to g at x, according to the question. So let's look at the first guy. When g at x is equal to 3 over 2, where is 3 over 2? 3 over 2 is what? Uh, 1.5, right? So it's about here. Well, if you go on the graph, it looks like it hits the graph only once, right there. So one solution. There's my abbreviation for the word solution. Okay, let's look at g at x is equal to minus 3 over 2. Where is minus 3 over 2? That's negative 1.5, correct? So it's approximately here. Again, if you go to the graph, it's about here. So again, one solution. Now let's go here. g at x is a half. So a half is here. right? So if you go across, you're going to hit the graph once here, once here, and once here. So it looks like there's three solutions when g at x is a half, and then g at x equals negative a half, it, negative one half is there. When you go across one, two, and three possible points on that graph, so again, three solutions. So adding it up, one, one, three, and three is a total of eight solutions to this equation and this graph.